Oh no, hang on. Uh, something's gone wrong. Oh, there we are. I can see you're all fine. And we should be sharing in the group now. I am just double checking okay. that. Yeah, we're all ready to go now. So we're sharing in the group. So um, just want to say hi everyone who tunes in today. Um, want to welcome Susanna Hardy. So um, Susanna completed a Bachelor of Arts at UNSW before running away to study acting in Paris. After working across film and television and creating sketch comedy for Foxtel in Australia, Susanna discovered a passion for writing. In between freelance writing for parenting and real estate media, Susanna pursued her love of women's contemporary fiction and now enjoys creating stories about the more comic side of life and love. Susanna lives in Sydney's inner west with her husband, two daughters and puppy. And her <laughs> book is um, Loving Lizzie Marsh. Hopefully you can see that. Yep. Yep. And um, just wanted to say, I just finished reading it and really, really oh. loved it. Um, oh, good. I really love the characters and felt really attached to them and have to give you five out of five. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, it was, I really loved the read. And want to tell people who are watching now that um, thanks to Pam McMillan, if you ask a question during the Facebook Live, you'll have a chance to win a copy of Loving Lizzie Marsh. So um, thanks so much, Susanna, for joining us. Just wondering oh, if you want to start off by telling us a little bit about your book. Um, yeah, sure. Well, it's a romantic comedy. Uh, obviously about a woman called Lizzie March. She's the central character. And she is a failed fashion designer who is desperately in search of her Mr. Right. She has a very, she, she has a very um, torpedo approach to relationships. So for her, you know, a wave in the street is as good as a first date as far as she's concerned. And, you know, every guy she meets is the one, uh, yet she's always single. So um, she's working in a call centre has a brief dalliance with the new work supervisor, who's a bad boy, Jake Wheeler. And after a very minor, innocent stalking incident, finds herself in the emergency department of the hospital, where the doctor on duty tells her that she's pregnant. So she obviously knows it to be Jake's baby and em embarks on a nine month mission to convince, well, she knows that he's the one for her. She has to try and make him realize that um, she is the one for him too. Um, but her life is fairly chaotic anyway, but now it really starts to unravel. Mm. But then somewhere through the chaos, she sort of, uh, you know, starts to see that everything, you know, could be possible if she sort of takes a long, hard look at herself and makes a few changes, <laughs> perhaps. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, it's about mm. her quest to find her true love. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> could you tell us how the idea for this first started for you? Well, um, I, I work as an actor, I've been an actor all my life and um, I started freelance writing about 15 years ago. But when I was working um, oh, years and years ago, I started a, a group with two other girlfriends called um, The Girls and we were three particular characters and um, ended up doing, we did little speeches on radio and we did a full length play in Sydney at the old Fitzroy Theatre and then we ended up doing uh, sketches for Foxtel um, and my particular character I just really loved writing for her and um, eventually once that project was finished I just continued doing some work on my own and didn't know quite what to do with her and then um, I started freelance writing but I'd, I'd um, had babies by that stage and I thought oh god I'm never mm. going to be able to write a book that's it's ridiculous <laughs> I haven't got time you know 800 words that's all I could do mm. <laughs> and then but I just did really want to do something with with that particular character so she kind of while that character was very much more um sort of stand up in a way it wasn't a real formed character so I had to really develop her and it was really just the taste of her that became Lizzie eventually. Mm. Um, but it, it really started with the character and then developed the world around her and the story. And I knew that she had to find, you know, was looking for love but, and she had, you know, many challenges to her personality mm. <laughs> in that way. But um, 
yeah, so that was where it really started from, I guess, and it's just been a journey trying to find my way with that. Did, did you know it was going to be a romantic comedy when you started it? Yeah, I did. I, did. Um, I, I very much thought that. I, I, I love women's contemporary fiction and um, particularly rom-com style and it, it, because it came from that background, it was a sort of a comedy group. Um, that's just what I love to write, so yeah, I knew it would be. And was this your first um, try at writing something, or had you written a manuscript uh, for before? fiction? Yeah, yeah. my first book, yeah. my first manuscript. Yeah. yeah, okay. We've got quite a few people watching, which is great, and just reminding um, the people watching to type in your comments for Susanna, and um, you'll have a chance to win a copy of her book. So Kelly is wondering what inspired you to want to change um, your career to be an author? Oh, uh, well, I still, I do still work as an actor, mm. but I, when I, it was about 15 years ago, I thought, cause you know, I just needed something with a little bit more financial security. And I thought, oh, freelance writing, that'd, mm -hmm. that'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> little did I know, but um, I did, I just sort of thought, I'm going to try and make money from writing and I, I went to the Australian Writers' Centre and um, did a course on feature writing, that sort of thing. And um, so I started getting work, um, getting published and but writing on, you know, home interiors and um, parenting and um, I do a lot of copywriting and that sort of thing. But I, I think it was my um, background in writing for stage that sort of, it was the creative side. And um, I, did, I just chipped away at it uh, while I was working as a freelance writer. I just, and I, you know, I think in with acting, there's so much time when you're not doing it. Whereas mm -hmm. writing, I could do all the time. I could get mm -hmm. up on a Monday and write, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, um, it appealed to me in that way. But I think, I think what really spurred me on was just having this one particular idea. Um, and I just, uh, yeah, I did love writing. Um, uh, you know, writing fiction in between yeah. all the, the you know, non-fiction I was doing. Yeah, and Jill's wondering if you'd always thought you wanted to be a writer. Uh, I thought I wanted to be an actor, probably mm -hmm. more, but I did, I always loved writing and reading and uh, even as an actor, I always did a lot of writing yeah. and performed a lot of my own work and um, yeah, which ended up becoming that particular group and a couple of other projects that I'd, I'd done that mm. actually became more m my work in the end. Mm. So, mm. yeah, I think it was something I always had to do. You know, if I was, it, yeah, I would always write. Yeah. Mm. And Kelly's wondering if you've got plans to write more romantic comedies. I'm wondering if you're yes, writing well, something I've, yeah, at the definitely. moment. Yeah, I've got, my next one is almost finished, mm. um, which is very, it's different. But I would like to write another one, another Lizzie, I think. Yeah, I was going to well. ask you. I'd love to, yeah. <laughs> to read more about Because if you know the end, I had, it, yeah. I had it written in a way that meant that I could mm. go there too. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to say too much. But yeah, I, I wrote it with, I wrote it thinking I would write another. Okay, so that's good to hear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and can you tell any, us anything about what you're writing at the moment? Uh, sure. It's... Um, uh, well, yeah, I don't want to say too much, but it's about an actress this time, which I okay. hadn't, even though there are elements of it in, in Lizzie, I hadn't mm. really drawn on the industry too much, but this one is going to be about an actress, and um, it's a um, enemies to lovers sort of romance, okay. yeah. and it's funny. And, still, and it's still um, a bit of com com comedy in it as well? Yeah, it'll be a rom-com. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Just not that, I, it's different because it hasn't got that um, sort of specific character that of Lizzie, mm. but um, yeah, I just wanted to try something a little bit different, but it'll still be funny. Mm. Mm. Sounds good. Belinda's wondering how long it took took you to write this book. Oh, ages, ages. Because <laughs> um, I started, I probably got the idea around 2013, okay. I think, and then between 2013 and 2017, I was sort of writing it, but I, you know, babe, kids and. Mm. you know not much time and then in about that time my youngest daughter started kindy so I could have a sort of larger blocks of time to look at it 
And that's when I kind of, I worked with a mentor and I had it professionally edited and probably got it ready by the end of 2017. And, um, but it wasn't until 12 months ago in 2020 that it got picked up. Mm -hmm. And so could you tell us a little bit about how hard or easy that was to get it published? Well, yeah, it was it was hard, really hard, because um, mm. you know people would say you only need one, you know, one person to like it, but it feels like a real battle sometimes. Mm. And um, I, I got at the, at the beginning, I got a lot of good feedback, but a, my, um, a lot of it was that rom coms were a bit tricky and didn't do so well in Australia and that sort of thing. Oh, no. But it seemed. I don't know, it seems to have not been the case last year or, you know, that can, things can change. Yeah, and I wonder if popular. maybe people wanted to be taken away from their everyday life a bit more as yeah. well. And, well, yeah, well, that's it. I think, you know, it was a hard year and, and people mm. wanted something a bit lighter to read, perhaps. Mm. I don't know. I've always loved rom-coms, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking, you know, maybe it wouldn't be here, it might be overseas or yeah. something like that. So, I'd sort of really kind of got to the point where I thought, oh, okay, well, I really love it, but maybe maybe it won't sell, so mm. I'll write the next one. And mm. I think once you sort of let go of it too, it sort of... And has it been picked up by anyone overseas? Um, no, this this is just Australia know. and New Zealand yeah. at this stage, okay. yeah. yeah. And being an um, actor yourself, could you see this being made into a movie? I could, yeah. yeah. I think, and because I write from, um, you know, often I write through dialogue and, and I sort of mm. see it more scenically. Um, maybe that sort of comes across, I don't know. But I, I, th I could definitely see it as a, as a movie. Yeah. But, you know. mm. <laughs> That's me. Mm. <laughs> and Tony's wondering, has meeting other authors, um, has, has that been an inspiration to keep writing between your acting? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm. It's um, it's really important to get have your sort of tribe of writers and the mm. people that you meet, and you learn so much about the industry, about you know, and also you see other people's journeys, which are all different. Mm. In in one way, you know, it can be hard because you don't you don't want to compare yourself to anyone, but it's also good to have because it's a very lonely, very lonely job. Yeah. Uh, you know, writing, so mm. it's good to have some you know other authors around you and you know see that it is possible and you know mm. that sort of thing and the support mm. and tony's also wondering if you have a favorite author um i love oh many i do love marion keys in yeah. this genre mm. particularly like her i find her really funny but also really she goes to some pretty serious issues as well i mm. like the way she tackles a lot of of um you know different subjects that are quite hard but yet yeah, she's you know very very funny and readable I like her and um, Australian authors Rachel Johns you know in, in that category mm. and um, oh I loved um, uh, recently I loved uh, Meg Meg Mason um, Sorrow and Bliss okay. which was yeah. absolutely amazing mm. that book was yeah. um, but there's um, Lisa Heidke is another great Australian author, and um, Maya Linnell, Panina May. There's mm. some really great mm. women's uh, contemporary fiction at yeah. the moment. Yeah, and I'm just wondering as well, is there anything you might have been reading lately that you'd like to recommend to us? Um, I've just read uh, a new a new author, Sarah Hawthorne, um, A Voice in the Night, which okay. is a thriller. Mm. That's just that's actually just come out this week. That was great. And another one um, by Sarah Bourne, Ella's War. I really liked that. Um, I'm reading Rachel John's How to Mend a Broken Heart, oh, yes. which is terrific. Yeah. I'm loving yeah. that. Um, what else am I reading? I've got a few books on the go at the moment. Um, uh, a Dictionary of Lost Words. Oh, yes. I recently oh, that's great. listened yeah, yeah. to that on audio and loved it. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably mm. what's on my pile at the moment. Yeah, no thanks for those recommendations. Kelly's wondering if you enjoy writing or acting more. Ah, oh, good question. Um, I love both for different things and it's quite nice to have the combination, but um, 
as as I'm you know getting older, there's less. It seems to be less acting work, mm -hmm. and um, I love I do love to be able to just write every day because I love to I do love to work, and I find acting stops out is quite frustrating. Whereas writing, I can do all the time. But then it's great to go out and do an acting job. Yeah. You know, to break it up as well. So I do love both, but I think it, there's nothing else I would uh, like. Acting was always my big love, but I love writing as much, mm -hmm. and probably more in uh, for other reasons. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably the only other thing that I've can is that's totally I absolutely love to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like and, and did you yeah. have someone who really encouraged your writing? Yes, I've had some amazing people along the way. Mm. Um, Valerie Koo from the Australian Writers Centre has been a huge influence for me. She um, sort of got me writing and has been very supportive. And um, another author who I was my, I did a, another course there of um, how to write women's contemporary fiction. And that was Lisa Heidker, who um, has uh, just had a book come out too. What was hers that I've just read? Um, uh, Miss Lily's Flower Shop. Okay. And um, that was, and she actually, I then later engaged her to mentor my man manuscript and she's been mm. incredibly positive and supportive mm. um, along the way. So, yeah, mm. yeah, there's been a number of mentors. Yeah, no, that's great. And when you were writing Loving Lucy March, did you show it to someone as you were writing it or you just waited till... It finished or? Um, no, I showed quite a few people. I, yeah. I showed, um, as I mentioned, Lisa, the first few chapters initially, like back in, mm. back in 2013. And she was like, oh, yeah, you know, that sounds good. Mm. Um, but then uh, I got her to read the whole thing once it had finished and sort of, yeah, to give me a bit of a, an edit on that. And then once I'd finished it, I actually gave the first three chapters to a couple of close people that I trusted yeah. um, felt comfortable about reading, just um, either writers or non-writers as well, just as a beta reader to have a read. Um, yeah, I think you've got to do that. You've got to, you've got to um, get it read at some point. Yeah. But, but be mindful of who you ask to read it because that could, you know, it can be, if it's the wrong person, it yeah. can be not a great experience, not a positive experience. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, I think it's important. It's like, you know, acting, you, it's got to be seen. It can't just be something you do in your room. Mm. And I think the same with writing, you know, you've mm. got to show somebody at some point. And if you want to, if you yeah. want other people to read it, you know, yeah. <laughs> not your diary or something. <laughs> and do you have any tips for aspiring writers? Uh, yes. Um, well, write, basically. I know everyone mm. says that, but it really is the only thing you can do is to sit down and write. And I always think... Even if I don't know what I'm going to write, it often comes when you write. You know, writing comes from writing, from actually doing it. And and also back when I said, oh, there's no way I could write a book. You know, I'm too busy. I've got young kids. And and then I sort of around me, I saw other people writing, getting published, and I'd sort of think, oh yeah, but they don't. And then they'd have the same age kids as me, and I'd think, oh, okay. And I sort of had to get over yes. myself yeah. and go everybody's busy, everybody has got lives and nobody really cares whether you write your book or not. So you just got to write it. You've just got to get on and do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's important. I think sh careful who you show you, your first, you know, manuscript to and, um, yeah, you know, work, find, choose carefully who you want to show that to. Um, and also, I mentioned before, don't compare yourself too much to other people because you can get very caught up going, oh, my God, everybody around me is getting published except, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's everyone has such a different journey and everyone it comes to people at, so, at different times in their lives for different reasons. So you, you just have to really think, well, it can happen. That's just, I've got to keep, I've just got to keep at it. Yeah. yeah. Hard thanks. to do, I know. Thanks for those, that <laughs> advice. I'm wondering as well, what did you do much research for Loving Lucy March? Um, I did as I went along, like obviously sort of um, hospital wise, I did a yeah. bit of research there and um, a bit of manufacturing and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, just whenever I needed to, I would then go off and find out what I needed to know. Mm. Um, a lot of it came from the world around me. A lot of it was inspired by my life or people 
not not that I am. My husband always says, are you sure you're not Lizzie Martin? I'm like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it, um, like people who know me might recognise elements um, yeah, um, from the, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, when it came to something specific, I would then go and do a bit of research. Mm. And, but I did work in a call centre. Okay, yeah. <laughs> With a lot of actors in Sydney. <laughs> and mm -hmm. was there anything that really surprised you about the, like with this being your debut novel, um, with the whole process of getting your book published and edited? And... Um, I guess it's, you, you realise how many times it gets read. Yeah. You know, it's a long process over over 12 months, but which is relatively short, I believe, in terms for some, you know, publishing journeys. That was, but it, um, I absolutely loved the whole process. I mm -hmm. really, really enjoyed it. Um, I had a great team at Pam McMillan. They were really, really wonderful. And I, you know, every time I get another round of edits back, it was always quite, I found it quite inspiring. So mm -hmm. it, it just worked well for me. I really enjoyed it. Mm. No, that's but, good. Uh, yeah, every, everything's yeah. been surprising. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. And when you started your book, did you know the ending before you started? Uh, yes, I knew what had to happen. Yeah. Um, and I think I did write the ending before, before I got there, because I quite like to, I do jump around sometimes mm -hmm. and write different scenes at different points. But, um, yeah, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to get there. Yeah. That was, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and Jill's wondering if you read your reviews. Oh, I have been. There's been some, I've seen quite a few on Instagram and some on, online and I have been reading them, but mm. um, I've been an actor for a long time. I'm used to, so used to all sorts yeah. of things. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> tough. Mm. <laughs> but I know, look, I know it may not be everyone's cup of tea, so mm. I can't please everybody. Mm. But yeah, I'm, I don't know. Wait, wait till I've had some bad ones and then mm. I might talk to, <laughs> is it Jill? <laughs> And I'm wondering what you hope um, readers will love about your book. Oh, look, I'm hoping that they'll find it funny, entertaining. Um, it's heartfelt. There are some hard moments in it for Lizzie as well. Mm. Um, and I think, yeah, just, I, I suppose it's just to have a bit of escape and to enjoy reading a story mm. that is funny and sort of lighthearted. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when you were a child growing up, were you a big reader? Yeah, I've always mm -hmm. been a big reader, love reading. And what with, sort of um, books did you like reading growing up? When I was little, yeah. um, I started off with Ina Blyton. I absolutely loved everything, mm -hmm. everything she wrote from, mm -hmm. you know, Famous Five, Mallory Towers. I loved the one to go to boarding school, like, you know, <laughs> the Sinclairs and all that sort of thing. Um, and I pretty, I got on to sort of... Um, you know, women's contemporary fiction pretty soon. Like I loved um, Kathy Lett. I grew up reading all her mm. books and um, yeah, I'm trying to think who else. Yeah, I can't think right now, yeah. but um, <laughs> I just, uh, <laughs> I just remember, yeah, Ina Blyton was yeah. absolutely addicted to. Yeah. I and just couldn't believe that she could write something, write things so like the faraway tree. I just yeah. Couldn't, how did she think that up? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, the faraway tree would have to be one of my favourites when I, yeah. mm, mm, I think lots of people's. And do you, ha your writing day, could you tell us a little bit about that and how you structure your day? Uh, yes, well, it's always, it is always a bit different because um just depending on what work i've got as well well because i work as a writer so i generally mm. once i've got everyone off to school then i will sit down and write until they come home mm. <laughs> and i often do work at night as well if you know if i've had no much time but i think as i started being a writer when i had babies i i just have that ability to go okay now sit right mm. and i just have to write when i can um but being a freelancer, it is just all over the place. Like I've just fitted in around everything. Yeah. Um, and do you set general, yourself yeah. goals for the day or? I do, I write lots of lists. I'm, mm. I'm a big list writer, so I will set, and I will, in terms of um, my fiction writing, I'll try and squeeze that in wherever I can as well. Yeah. Sort of, you know, and because otherwise if you don't, it doesn't get done. It's mm. very easy to push that 
you know, work that you, especially when you don't even know if something's going to be published, it's very hard to sort of give that priority, but you kind of have to just squeeze in an hour. But a lot of Lizzie March I wrote, you know, in the dark on the bottom bunk in my kids' room or, you know, outside jazz ballet or yeah. hip hop and mm. netball and things like that. Mm. <laughs> Tony's wondering if you um, make up stories for your daughters. Oh, yeah, I used to. I used to, when I'd read them stories to go to, um, when they were younger, I would mm. make up stories for mm. them. <laughs> Can't even remember what. But, <laughs> yeah. but they, they actually love writing and reading too. Oh, okay, is... that's good, yeah. 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 Well, um, thanks so much for talking to us. Um, just right. wondering before we finish off, do you want to tell people how they can keep up to date with what you're yeah, up to? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm on uh, Facebook. I'm Susanna Hardy author. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Suze Hardy, S-U-Z-E-H-A-R-D-Y. Instagram is Susanna.Hardy. And then uh, my website is um, www.SusannaHardyWriter. So there's plenty of opportunity to... Yeah. Find me. <laughs> no, thanks for that. And when sh would we expect to see a new book out for you? Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe next year? Next year, yeah. <laughs> Soon, hopefully. Yeah, well, I'll be looking out for that. And um, also really, really hoping you do do a sequel. To Lizzie Marsh. Yes, I'm going to start very yeah. soon. I feel really inspired to now. Yeah, no, yeah. it will be really great. I'll be looking out for that, certainly. And I hope we get a chance to talk to you again. Oh, that would be lovely. So Thank thanks, so much thanks me. so much. And thanks for everyone who joined in and the questions that we got. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye.